I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. In today's video, I'll be talking about, well, the top 10 most overrated books that I have ever read. And if you are an author, I do not think it is a good idea for you to watch this video. Seriously, I think it is better if you just skip this video, okay? I will, be I will be back talking about all the books that I love again after this video. And as some of you, and probably a lot of you know, I try to only talk about the books that I love on my YouTube channel, but once or twice per year, there will be a video like this. And well, today apparently is that day. Last month, I talked about some of the most underrated and underhyped books, and today I will be talking about well, 10 of the most uh, overrated books in my opinion. These are not essentially the worst books that I have ever read, even though some of them are actually are. But this list will contain 10 books with very high average rating, let's say above 4, above the average rating of 4 on Goodreads, and I dislike them very much. Although it is my preference to talk about the books that I love on my YouTube channel, but sometimes I think we have to include a video like this just to give our viewers an idea of our reading taste. Light cannot exist without darkness after all. So yeah, there is no ranking of preference to this list. I will just talk about these books based on the uh, from the lowest average rating up to the highest average rating on Goodreads. And with that in mind, the first book that I will talk about is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I think uh, if you have been following my YouTube channel on Goodreads, this is probably one of the review that some of you might know me from. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the earliest one-star review, probably the first one-star review that I ever gave to a book. And yeah, I dislike Uprooted with every being of my heart. It's just everything about this book just did not click with me. I found it insane, ridiculous, and infuriating that the main character Agnieszka, she was constantly mocked, berated throughout the whole book, and somehow she still fell in love. It just did not make sense to me at all. It really felt like Fifty Shades of Grey in the forest, and also I actually pity all the trees that were sacrificed to make this book. Yeah, I am not a fan. It is easily one of the one of the worst books that I have ever read. It currently has an average rating of 4.04. Because of this book, I actually stopped reading Naomi Novik books for many years. It's not until I finally cave in and tried reading Spinning Silver that Turns out, you know, Uprooted was a one-time thing. For now, anyway, because I absolutely love Spinning Silver. It is another standalone novel by Naomi Novik. And yeah, I absolutely love that one. It is a complete opposite of my reaction to Uprooted. So yeah, not a fan of this one. If you're a fan, I'm sorry. But again, this is just my opinion. Just like my thoughts on every book I'm going to mention next. And the next one is one of the most controversial opinion that I probably have ever posted on my YouTube channel. And it is, of course, The Fall of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. I gave this one a 1.5 out of 5 stars rating. Really disappointed with this. Super disappointed, really. I am a fan of the books of Babel before the release of The Fall of Babel, but this is easily one of the most disappointing conclusion to a book that I have ever read. To a serious story, because not only this book, it started disappointingly already. It started with about 150 pages, I think if I remember correctly, of Adam Boreas, who was missing completely in the previous book. And after that, I thought we would get a huge focus on Senlin, you know, the main character of the first book, Senlin Ascends, but no, Senlin, Senlin has pretty much became a secondary character in this one, and although his POV chapters are some of the best one in the in the Fall of Babel, but it was not enough to actually satisfy me. And also the ending to this, it was just it was disappointing, not gonna lie. It was not satisfying at all. It really felt like there will be a continuation to this, but Josiah Bancroft hasn't really confirmed that there will be a continuation to the books of Babel. And believe me, I am not happy with saying I dislike the Fall of Babel. This is a book that I really want to love. Before I read The Fall of Babel, I even reread all the books in the series. Sand in the Sands, Arm of the Sphinx, The Hot King, which I consider to be the best of the series. I did a second read of them all before I read The Fall of Babel. That's 
how much I want to love the fall of Babel. That's how much. I don't usually do reread just to refresh my memories, but I did that for the books of Babel and it disappointed me, unfortunately. I will still read the Hexologist, Josiah Bancroft's newest book. I already have a review copy of that one, but I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that will be a hit with me because if not, I think it might be time for me to actually drop reading Josiah Bancroft's books. I think it is time to say that his books are not for me. And you know what? There is something really odd about my thoughts on the fall of Babel, the reaction anyway, because I have received some comments on my YouTube channel saying that I am way too positive on my YouTube channel. They want me to talk about something that I dislike more often. Some of you anyway, but I did that for this one and the hate comments that I got oh my god it was incredible like now what do i have to do that's why if you're a booktuber watching this well do not hesitate to post your positive or negative opinion because in the eyes of people well you can't be 100 percent right so just do what you think is best and moving on to the next book on the list this is the traitor baru cormoran by Seth Dickinson. <laughs> yeah, this one, I think it did not actually infuriate me or, well, it, it definitely disappointed me, but it did not infuriate me because my main issue with the Traitor Baru Cormoran is really simple. I could not click with Seth Dickinson's writing. I felt that uh, the prose was too dry and it really, it was really difficult for me to connect with the characters and the storyline because of the writing style. Many readers have mentioned that this is one of the most emotional books that they have ever read and the ending is incredibly powerful. And although I must say that the ending uh, was good, I still cannot say that it was amazing. But again, as I said, my main issue with the Traitor Baru Cormoran is because I could not click with the writing. I felt like it felt like reading a textbook somehow, in my opinion. It felt so dry and I really could not connect with everything in this book. So unfortunate because this is again another one of those books that I really want to love. I bought the physical copy. After reading it, I immediately unhold it. And moving on to the next one, this will probably come as a surprise to some of you because this is Brandon Sanderson's book. Yeah, I know, right? I never expect I would include Brandon Sanderson's book in a list like this, but I just read this novella uh, this month. Yeah, yeah, it is a novella or a novelette. It is very short, but the title is Defending El uh, Elysium. Yeah, Defending Elysium. This is a prequel, a story to the Skyward series. I read this one after I finished reading the first book in the Skyward series. Oh, Skyward. Yeah, I read Skyward and then I immediately uh, read Defending Elysium. And this was just so disappointing. I didn't actually know what to expect, but people told me that I should read this one after I finished reading Skyward. And of course, I tried reading it. I finished it uh, very quickly because it is a short book. It's only about 30 or 40 pages long, but none, nothing in this book felt well polished enough. It really doesn't feel like it is Brandon Sanderson's book. In the beginning of Defending Elysium, it is written that this is, well, this title is written even before Elantris, Brandon Sanderson's debut novel, was published. So I guess it really shows how unpolished the writing and pretty much everything. It's like Brandon Sanderson tried to cram so many ideas into this one and none of them well, felt ever developed enough to have the big impact. When the twist came, it did not feel surprising. And yeah, I'm just not a fan. If someone didn't tell me that this is actually a prequel story to the Skyward series, I would not be able to tell that this is actually is a prequel story to the Skyward, the Skyward Quartet. And now after I posted this review on Goodreads, uh, plenty of people have mentioned that I should have read this one after I finished reading the third uh, novel in the Skyward series, Cytonic. So maybe, I will do that again. Uh, maybe I will do that after I finish reading Cytonic, uh, probably within this year. After that, maybe I will give Defending Elysium a try and see how I feel about it. But for now, this is easily one of Brandon Sanderson's worst books that I have ever read. And book number five on today's video, it will be Dragon Heaven by Robin Hobb. Insane, right? After Brandon Sanderson, it is a book by Robin Hobb. But cannot lie, even though uh, Robin Hobb and Brandon Sanderson are some of my favorite authors of all time, but this one, Dragon Heaven, is not it. <laughs> this is the second book in the Rain Wild Chronicles Quartet, and I think many of you know just how much I dislike Rain Wild Chronicles Quartet, which is the fourth sub-series in the entire Realm of the Elderling series. And well, this is the worst 
of the mall. This, it felt very YA and it is not a good example of a good YA. It is not at all, in my opinion. I know many have said that even though this is uh, Robin Hobb's weaker series and it is still pretty good compared to many other books, I actually cannot feel the same because the events and the storyline and also pretty much the way the characters are characterized, they are filled with things that infuriate me a lot in fantasy books that I usually read. And that is characters that are always, always horny. Yeah, these characters, these teenagers, they were stranded in Dragon Heaven and for the entirety of the book, they were just focused on which character get to kiss or bang who. It was so annoying. <laughs> it was so annoying. I cannot believe that I was reading a Robin Hobb book. Dragon Heaven is the only one where it really felt like that. Because the first book in the Rainwild Chronicles Quartet, uh, I think Dragon Keeper, and also the third book, uh, City of Dragons, the both of them were alright. Even I, I actually finished reading City of Dragons, I think, in two days. It was really fast-paced and also it felt engaging uh, to me. I did not feel that at all in well, this book in Dragon Heaven. I actually have no idea whether this is only just me or maybe a lot of people feel the same way as I did. But generally speaking, I am not a fan of characters constantly being horny or constantly stressing about being horny. Yeah, it's just, it's just not the type of story that I like to read in my fantasy books. If I want to read something like that, then I would rather just read a smut book or a romance book immediately rather than reading them in my fantasy books. This is not to say that romance shouldn't exist in fantasy, not at all, but it is not my preference to read a fantasy book with a, such a huge focus on romance and, well, again, characters being horny. Dragon Heaven is really just a YA fantasy book about teenagers finding their libido explosion and then they are stressed because they have sex deprivation. So yeah, not a fan of this one at all. And the issues that I have with the next book on the list is kind of similar to what I had with Dragon Heaven, except that for this one, everyone, well, they are adults. And this is one of the most significant drop in quality to a series that I have ever read. And it is for the third book in the Moon Tide Quartet. The title of this book is Unholy War or what I dubbed an I'm horny war because suddenly everyone is extremely horny. They are just horny and everything that happened in this book and everything that happened in this book is like a character with an opposite gender and immediately they want to bang. Immediately. And this happened throughout the whole book for I think 700 pages long. And this is crazy because I really like reading the first two books in the Moon Tide Quartet, especially the second book, which I consider to be the best books of the series. When I finished reading that, I thought Unholy War would become my favorite book in the series because maybe this is a sign that the series constantly gets better and better with each book. But apparently not. This is a significant drop from a cliff. It's insane, insanely bad in my opinion. I cannot talk about it on my YouTube channel, but I talk about all the stuff that I dislike about this book in details on my review on Goodreads. So if you want to know about them, you want to know the description that I mentioned, the disgusting things and all that, then feel free to check out that review. Seriously, this one is... Ugh. It is so awful and it actually has an average rating of 4.2 on Goodreads. So apparently a lot of people love this book, just not me. When I read one of the main characters actually used the magic system for, well, 24-7 erection, I was just eye-rolling so hard. It was just... It's... Yeah, it's ridiculous. Seriously, it's ridiculous. And book number seven on the list is A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. This one is the second book in the Shade of Magic trilogy and many readers love this one. So I am definitely on the unpopular, unpopular opinion when it comes to this book. I actually really enjoyed reading Vicious by V.E. Schwab because of how much I enjoyed reading Vicious, I want to read, I wanted to read Shade of Magic as well because apparently her adult fiction felt like it would really be suitable uh, for me. But after reading Shade of Magic, well, evidently that is not the case. And A Gathering of Shadows is proof of that. I think just like Uprooted, I have talked about this book way too many times on my YouTube channel as well. But basically, my main issue with this one is, re is really an extreme case of Mary Sue. And that's really it. 
usually I can be quite tolerant about this and I actually like the Lila Bart in the first book. But in A Gathering of Shadows, it really felt like Lila's character development and the power scale, everything just happened way too fast. I also, I also think the entire Shade of Magic trilogy, well, the setting of the four, uh, four color London felt underutilized. I truly believe the four London thing in the Shade of Magic trilogy is such a cool concept and I wish I, I wish it was developed more. And moving on to the next one, this is The Fell Sword by Miles Cameron. This is the second book in the Traitor Sun cycle series. I think if you have been following my YouTube channel from the beginning, you know how much, just how much I really want to love uh, The Traitor Sun cycle by Miles Cameron. His books have some of the most beautiful cover art, uh, the, the entire series really. And well, so many people I know love this series very much and I believe them. But apparently this is just an unfortunate situation where I have to be on the unpopular side. The Red Knight was disappointing and then uh, the Fell Sword, I couldn't even I couldn't even say anything else. I decided to drop the series after the first two books. Everything about it just did not work for me. The insanely large number of POV characters from the first book felt uh, unnecessary and also I just did not like the historical or historical epic fantasy setting of the series it felt jarring to me and it constantly took me out of my immersion when i see real pivotal figures from our world appearing in the series and behaving differently and i don't know it's just hard to describe i've talked about this on my review of the red knight and also the fell sword my full review of them but this is not the end of my journey with reading miles cameron or christian cameron book many have told me that his hysterical fiction series are even better. And the next time I read the book by Miles Cameron or Christian Cameron, I think I will be reading his hysterical fiction novels. And book number nine on today's video is The Desert Prince by Peter V. Brett. Yeah, this is the first book in the sequel series to the Demon Cycle series, a series that in my opinion should have ended with Demon Cycle. Not gonna lie, when I found out about The Desert Prince, I was excited. I thought it would be even better than The Demon Cycle, but apparently, no, nope, it's not for me and after this book, I actually just decided that's it. I think I am done with reading Peter V. Brad's books. I already have a lot of issues with the Demon Cycle. It is another one of those sad moments because Demon Cycle are filled with great things. They are burdened by, well, way too many issues to talk about. So it's kind of hard for me to recommend Demon Cycle, even though there were some parts of that series that I really like. But with each passing day, it, my memory of that series it uh, doesn't get better, it only gets worse and worse, mainly in the treatment of the woman and also how Peter V. Brad developed them. It's like every single character in the demon cycle cannot develop without actually encountering sexual assault first. And it felt insane to me that it has to be that way. And when I read The Desert Prince, I thought the situation would be better, but Nah, it's, it's not. I appreciate the social commentary that Peter V. Brad tried to include in The Desert Prince, but overall I think it felt too forced in my opinion. I don't actually mind having the social commentary, but just like every book, once it really felt like the characters became the author actually talking, well, that's when my escapism and immersion vanish. And that is not a good thing when I'm reading a fantasy book. Unfortunately, that's what happened with The Desert Prince. And finally, the last book on the list, this is the 12th book in the Last Kingdom series. Well, yeah, I know this is not a fantasy book. This is actually a historical fiction but I have to include this one. This is the only book in the entire Last Kingdom series to receive a one star rating from me. And overall, it has an average rating of 4.42 on Goodreads. Yeah, that's a high average rating, but overall this one uh, did not click with me, but I think mostly my issue with Sword of Kings is that in the Last Kingdom series, all of them follow the same pattern. And by the time I reached the Sword of Kings, the penultimate installment in the Last Kingdom series, I was already extremely tired of this pattern. So tired. And I was actually reading the book, uh, reading the series one book per month. But yeah, by the time I actually got to the Sword of Kings, I just want everything to be done. And thankfully, uh, the last book in the series, War Lord, ended up being one of my favorite in the entire series. Maybe even my favorite, really, in the entire series. And so, at least it ended 
on a good run. But yeah, uh, Sword of Kings, it did not work for me. I actually think this book, well, let's just say if this book was unpublished, it will not hurt the content and quality of the entire series. So yeah, that's it. That's a wrap on today's negative video. So Salty Patrick has to sign out now, but do let me know what you think about the 10 books I just mentioned. Again, this is not a list of the worst books that I have ever read, even though some of them are actually the worst books that I have ever read. Like, let's say, Uprooted. Yeah. And as I said at the beginning of this video, everything here is just my opinion. If you like them, there is nothing wrong with you. Even though I love talking about the books that I love on my YouTube channel much more than talking about the books that I dislike, sometimes once or twice per year, I think it is, well, I think it is fair for me to include a video like this just to give you viewers an idea of my reading taste. So that way, my recommendation for the books that I love can click better with you. Hopefully, anyway. That's it for me today. Do let me know what you think about uh, the books that I mentioned in the comment section down below. And of course, tell me what are some of the books that you think are the most uh, overrated. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.